from Sydney. Seven News with Sally Bowery. Good afternoon. First of four, a lifeline for Australian workers. Thousands of people are set to be given a cash boost from the government. A $15 billion expansion of the JobKeeper program has been announced to keep businesses and workers around the country afloat. Political reporter Taylor Aiken is live for us in Canberra this afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Taylor. Take us through these changes. Good afternoon, Sally. Well, given the crisis in Victoria, the federal government is making it easier for businesses to access JobKeeper from the end of September. Employers will only have to prove their revenue dropped 30% in the September quarter instead of the June quarter as well, and workers hired before July 1st will now also be eligible for the scheme. The Treasurer says while the changes are are national. He expects 80% of the additional $15 billion will be taken up by Victoria with a further 500,000 workers to be added to the program due to the impact of the stage four lockdown there. The cost ballooning out to $100 billion, but the government insists it is necessary. This is a program that conflicts based on the demand. And what we're seeing in Victoria is real demand in what is a real crisis. JobKeeper has been a lifeline to people's livelihoods. It's been a lifeline to businesses. And Taylor, what was the update from the meeting of National Cabinet this morning? Sally, the Victorian outbreak was on top of the agenda, including the impact of the stage four lockdown on the national economy. The National Cabinet agreed to an ongoing audit of aged care preparedness in responding to an outbreak, along with maintaining the cap on international arrivals. The Prime Minister also issued a stark warning about the international race to find a coronavirus vaccine. Whoever finds this vaccine must share it. Any country that would have found this vaccine and not make it available around the world uh, without restraint, I think would be judged terribly by history. The Prime Minister saying while a timeline of a vaccine is still not yet clear, if Australia was to be the first to find it, we would share it with the world. Scott Morrison now calling on other world leaders to make the same public commitment. Sally. OK, thanks for that, Taylor. A crackdown on Victorians making their way into New South Wales has begun. From today, any person coming across our southern border will be ordered into hotel quarantine as we try to fight off a second wave here in Sydney. Chris Reason has more. Chris, these are the toughest restrictions yet. Sally, good afternoon to you. That's right. The border restrictions now tougher than they have ever been as two significant policies come into play from today with uh, state governments wrestling to do what they can to keep this virus spread under control. The Queensland border, of course, closes to New South Wales and the ACT from 1am tomorrow, just eight, nine hours time, sparking a rush in recent days of both Queenslanders to return and holidaymakers to get in quick. While at the other end of the state from today, any Victorians and returning New South Wales residents are only allowed to fly in now via Sydney Airport and then be forced into hotel quarantine for the next two weeks at their own expense. Now, also today, a major embarrassment for the Health Minister, Brad Hazard, forced to issue an apology after his comments to the Leader of the Opposition, J.D. McKay, in Parliament yesterday over the issue of making masks mandatory. Here's some of what was exchanged on that issue. The question is, do we or don't we have enough face masks? You certainly need one. She's a goose, don't worry about her. Quite stupid. Now, also today, Sally, authorities concerned about one family-based cluster in the Newcastle area, three members now positive, and possibilities of two more clusters following unrelated movements of two men in their 20s, one through seven restaurants and bars in the city and in the West End, another through Western Sydney linked to the Mounties outbreak. Uh, as the latest data for New South Wales shows, 11 more cases uh, today. One, a woman in her 60s from southwest Sydney with an unknown source of infection. Another nine locally acquired from known outbreaks and one return traveller from Victoria. Sally. Thank you, Chris. Every Victorian VCE student will be given special consideration, boosting their end of school marks in the wake of the pandemic. It comes as the state recorded 450 infections overnight and another 11 deaths. 
The army is knocking on more doors than ever before. Yesterday alone, 1,150 checks. Most Melburnians are following our strict stage four lockdown, but still 150 people weren't home. There may be lawful reasons for that. Uh, addresses may be incorrect. People may be, may be uh, doing their ISO somewhere else. Uh, but it is clear there are some people who are not. And uh, that's why Victoria Police have additional powers. Another 450 coronavirus cases have been recorded in the state in the past 24 hours. 11 more Victorians have lost their lives. Seven of those are linked to our aged care crisis. One female in her 50s, uh, two males in their 70s, three uh, males and three females in their 80s and two females in their 90s. Uh, we of course send our best wishes and our sympathies to the families of each of those 11 Victorians. There are now more than 600 Victorians fighting the virus in hospital. That's 69 more than yesterday, including 41 people in intensive care. But there's hope hospital numbers will decline over the next two weeks. Crystal ball gazing is, is not a particularly useful uh, exercise. I think um, having seen stabilisation in numbers, uh, that's, a, um, that's a positive. We do expect within 14 days of a, of a really significant intervention that we'll see a, a change in numbers. Another 139 healthcare workers fighting the virus are now infected and there are 911 active cases in the sector. It's a concerning number, it's a very big number. Melbourne, a city usually thriving, now deserted on day two of our six week lockdown. There is a lot of pain here but ultimately there will be significant gain. Jacqueline Felgate, 7 News. Members of the Australian Defence Force are being deployed to Lebanon following the deadly chemical blast that decimated its capital. As Hugh Whitfeld reports, the death toll is expected to rise, so far killing at least 157 people and injuring 5,000. Protests are nothing new in the Lebanese capital, but people are back out on the streets just days after the blast, furious at what they believe is a corrupt and inept government that allowed this tragedy to occur. People simply aren't even at the point where they can think of rebuilding, yet they are in survival mode. Three days on from the devastating blast, the cleanup begins in Beirut. The army called in to help reopen roads, but as the day went on, tensions rose. <laughs> Residents in the worst hit area of the city gathered for an impromptu demonstration, demanding those responsible be held accountable. And at the port, <laughs> grieving families demanded the bodies of missing workers be recovered. The blast, the last straw for so many after years of government corruption. Tonight, as some protesters approached the parliament, the Lebanese army reportedly fired tear gas. Australian John Paul Rahan is still unable to comprehend how he escaped with his life. It's my blood here. It's all my blood. His home, one of 300,000 impacted. And I saw a white cloud coming here. And I flew all the way here. Russia is sending a mobile hospital along with emergency workers. Humanitarian aid and equipment is being sent from Turkey and a team of Italian firefighters touched down overnight. French President Emmanuel Macron pledged his support as he walked the streets of Beirut. To help as rapidly as we can, we brought drugs, direct aid, soldiers, doctors. We have to send food. They need materials to build. As the search for the missing continues, at this stage, Australia's Department of Foreign Affairs says there have been no reports of more Australian fatalities or serious injuries. The French president saying he won't be giving any money or aid or assistance to the Lebanese government unless it reforms its corrupt ways, saying instead he'll be helping Lebanese citizens directly. Meteorologist David Brown joins us now. Good afternoon to you, Brownie. What's the latest on the weather front? Yes, Sally, look, the rain arrived on time and, of course, it's cold and wet. More soaking rain expected tonight. Look at current conditions. There it is. It's sitting on 12 degrees. It's snowing up in the high country. Rain has been reported throughout most regions today. And as you can see from the maxima, it's cold throughout. The trough that's been driving the wet weather is now gradually heading towards the coast. 
Most of the rain should move offshore tomorrow, as we can see, but the drenching continues to the south as a low develops right here off the uh, central coast. As we look at totals for the next three days, well, the top, we're expecting more than 100 millimetres to unfold right here over the uh, south coast. For us in our backyard, potentially 25 to 50 millimetres. But uh, at the moment, as we look at current conditions, we've got rain throughout as our radar's showing us at the moment. It's 11 degrees in Penrith, Cronulla. It's currently 13 degrees. And yes, the rain continues to tumble down. Detailed weekend weather, top of the hour, Sally. It's a wet one. Thanks for that, Brownie. Coming up, Sydney's afternoon news. A jet ski rider films a dangerously close encounter with a whale. A knife held to his throat, so why was this man smiling during what appeared to be a terrifying armed robbery? Smashed off her bike, sent flying across the road and down a drain. You won't believe what happens next. And a cold case investigation which has Australia hooked. We have new developments on a mystery which rocked Bathurst for years. Coming up. I'm about to take you on a journey so magical you'll never want to leave. A garden so unique your imagination will be running wild and the transformation proving size doesn't matter. We've only got a small area but I'll show you how to make a huge impact. New Better Homes tonight at 7 on 7. The all new Isuzu D-Max is coming. Are you ready? Search all new D-Max. Vodafone is for all you rulers. We get you, stream queens, and you, kings of connection. And you, your majesties of working from home. We're for you, supreme providers of screen time. And definitely you, the rejectors of contracts. It's your rules, your network, and Vodafone is at your command. You rule. With Vodafone. So what cash flow boost is available for my business? What are the tax rules around job seeker payments? We've all got tax questions this year. Thankfully at h and Block we have the answers. Let's get you started. Maximise your tax refund. Book an appointment today. Is So Good Almond Milk the better milk for you? It's dairy free and full of calcium. So Good Almond Milk is packed with vitamins and unsweetened varieties have no added sugar. Feel good inside and out and make today so good. We took CrimSafe, Australia's strongest security door and a competitor's door, and put them to the test. If it's not CrimSafe, it's not CrimSafe. This is an athlete sprinting past every leak in Depend Real Fit underwear, our best fit ever. She's comfortable, protected, her strength, respected. Depend. The only thing stronger than us is you. I juggle, but even when I juggle, I still suffer from chafing. Step one, they put these lycra panels between the legs. It glides when you walk. You can buy them online at step1.life. Step one, don't juggle these. Feel the clarity of non-drowsy Claritine for fast, powerful 24-hour hay fever and allergy relief from sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes and skin. Because stuffed animals are clearly no substitute for real ones. Feel the clarity and live Claritine clear. At Harvey Norman, receive 15% back in Harvey Norman gift cards when you purchase a selected Australian-made Sealy Posturepedic mattress or ensemble. That's right, 15% back in Harvey Norman gift cards. Sealy Posturepedic is proudly Australian-made and owned, featuring the latest technology and innovation for the ultimate support. Upgrade your sleep with a new Australian-made Sealy Posturepedic mattress or ensemble from our selected range and receive 15% back in Harvey Norman gift cards. Harvey Norman, supporting local and Australian-made manufacturers. Offer ends Monday. Go! <laughs> Deb! Coming for a coffee? Oh, sorry, Trish. We've got to go. You can go your own way. Go your own way. You can go your own way. Go your own way in the seven seat Isuzu MUX from 46990 Drive Away. You're watching 7's 4pm Sydney News and this is The View from Parramatta. Right now it's a chilly 11 degrees.
A fisherman has had a spectacular and slightly unsettling encounter with a humpback whale on the Gold Coast. He was fishing with a friend yesterday when the giant mammal appeared beneath their jet skis. Holy sh You should see it right next to me! Oh! That about sums it up. The whale stayed with the pair for several minutes, gliding just beneath the craft before continuing on its northern migration. We have some terrifying pictures to show you now. An armed bandit has stormed a Sydney convenience store holding a huge knife to the throat of a man inside. But there was one problem. The man didn't even work there. Andrew Denny has more. Andrew, what happened? Well, good afternoon. Police are on the hunt for two men behind a violent robbery spree last night across three Sydney suburbs. Cameras inside a supermarket at Belmore captured one thief holding a large machete to the throat of a man demanding money and that he opened the till. The only problem is that this man was a customer, not an employee, and he had no idea how to operate the cash register. The store worker was in a back room at the time and when he saw what was going on, he ran to set off the store's alarm. The thief fled, stealing only a mobile phone and tobacco. What they have done, it was a wonderful uh, job they have done. They're very, very smart. You know, I'm really glad that he didn't do anything stupid to them. You know, it could have gone, it could have been different. Now, this wasn't the only incident last night. The same man held up another store in Campsie around 8.30, getting away with cash and cigarettes. At half an hour earlier, a woman was mugged while walking along Undercliff Road at Earlwood. These acts, it's just, it's not acceptable. And, um, and we are actively saturating the area. Now, the main offender police are looking for is described as having a dark complexion and being around 180 centimetres tall. They're also looking for a second man described as being Caucasian, aged in his 20s, at last seen wearing a grey hoodie. The pair took off in a small silver vehicle. Things went from bad to worse for a moped rider who was hit by a car and sent flying into a storm drain. She bounced in head first after hitting the pavement hard. The bizarre accident happened in Brazil after a car turned in front of the scooter. Strangers stopped to help, one even jumping into the sewer to pull her out. While that was happening, the driver who caused the accident sneaked back into his car and took off. A man who decided to spell out the words marry me using 100 T light candles has burnt down his flat. The big moment took a turn for the worse when he left the apartment to pick up his girlfriend from work. They returned to find their love nest engulfed in flames. Fortunately, she still said yes, despite the unfortunate mishap. She's very brave. Pictures from the scene showed the charred and blackened remains of the tea light candles and balloons. All right, next in Seven's Afternoon News, why scientists want to deliberately infect people with coronavirus? They're being labelled reckless, but could they be on to a cure? Giving birth on the side of the M4, meet the mum who ran out of time and was forced to pull over and push. And it's what was Shervo. Rival coaches react to Wayne Bennett's COVID breach. Tonight on Seven News with Michael Usher. A family virus cluster forces a school to close, customer attacked in a string of overnight robberies, and the build begins for a new look Parramatta. Tonight on 7 News at 6. Kate Hudson is trading the high life for the family life. Raising Helen, tonight, 8.30 on 7. Yumi's great tasting dips and now they've created an amazing new range of veggie burgers. If you're trying to eat less meat they're a deliciously easy meal everyone will love. With the goodness of fresh veggies, herbs and spices and no preservatives they're proudly Australian made and bursting with flavour. Choose Yumi's for great taste you can feel good about. New Yumi's veggie burgers. We're for real. 
boring, conservative, fabulous. Play us responsibly with Sportsbet's new expert tips from Best Bets. Compare the experts' best and value picks for the day and add them straight to your bet slip. <laughs> Gentlemen, look at yourself. Now look at me. Now look at yourself. Down there. You're probably wearing cotton underwear. I'm wearing Step 1s. They're made from bamboo. They breathe. Are you happy? I'm happy. Go get them at step1.live. The best thing to happen to privates since Ryan. Anaconda's winter clear-out sale is on now. 40% off all thermals by Mountain Designs. 30% off all clothing by The North Face. Head in store or shop online at anacondastores.com. Anaconda! Somebody just knocked at my door. I left this package there. Oh, this is dope. Wait, there's a massive stain on it. <laughs> and this vanish. I feel like this is some kind of challenge. Let's go figure this out. To add half a scoop to cold water. Let's see if we can get this stain out. Yeah, I actually can't believe how quick it's working. So I got the jumper on now. I'm actually feeling this. For amazing results, just cold wash with Vanish Oxy Action. Oh, baby, baby, feed me, baby, feed me, oh, feed me. Time, powerless to resist. James Dyson has reinvented the vacuum. Again, big, heavy motors are replaced by this powerful hyperdymium motor. Redesigned cyclones generate forces up to 79,000 G and an improved cleaner head with carbon fiber filaments removes fine dust. For powerful cleaning anywhere. Only a Dyson works like a Dyson. Scientists at Oxford University are seeking permission to deliberately expose volunteers to coronavirus as a way of speeding up vaccine research. Volunteers would be given a trial vaccine first. Scientists would then deliberately infect them with COVID-19. They would then be monitored to see if they managed to fight off the infection. A lot of people feel very passionately that they should be and that the tiny risk is uh, worth it for the benefit of developing a vaccine or a drug faster. The procedure is what's known in scientific circles as a challenge trial. It produces results far more quickly than other methods, but as you can imagine, the scientists involved have been labelled reckless by some. It's time for Sport Now with Matt Shervington and Matt Rival coaches are treading carefully with Wayne Bennett. Yes, a little bit of a backhander from one of them as well. Raiders coach Ricky Stewart says everyone knows the COVID rules and it's time to show true character. Stewart was fuming after Wayne Bennett was sent to 14 days in isolation for eating at a restaurant and breaching NRL biosecurity rules. I love to go to the pub, have a beer with the mates. I love to go out to lunch or go to dinner with the family. But you can't. We've just got to keep reminding each other. You know, it's it's life. You know, it's where we are at this present moment. Under tough times, you find out the uh, the true character of people. Bennett's old mate Alfie Langer will also miss tonight's South Broncos clash after he and two Brisbane support staff breached their bubble to attend a function. Dragons coach Paul McGregor was blunt on Blues prop Paul Vaughan's decision to eat at a cafe. It's very disappointing. There's no reason really for it except. Um, you know, it was a selfish behaviour, really. Without Vaughan, the Dragons went down 24-16 to the Roosters last night, who celebrated Mitch Orbison's 300th game. Luke Keary guided the depleted Premiers to victory. Dragon Jackson Ford is facing a 2-3 week ban for trying to trip him. Wallabies coach Dave Rennie has settled into his new job to make the Wallabies competitive with the All Blacks again and stopping teenagers being tempted by rugby league money. We're going to lose some. We're going to lose some because you know, financially we can't compete. Financially it won't be as good initially. Um, you know, we've got a great game and got great product and it's global. Rugby and the Rabbitohs are waiting for a decision from the teen sensation Joseph Sawali. The Swans have apologised and the AFL has reminded clubs metal studs are illegal after Collingwood's Isaac Quainor suffered a gruesome leg wound from Sydney debutant Sam Wicks's boot last night. The Swans went down 50-41 to 41 to stay second last on the ladder.
The Richmond Tigers are under scrutiny for antics during the team song where Marby or Chol appeared to be groped by teammates after two separate games. Sydney FC may have given the Wanderers finals chances a boost last night. Adelaide squandered a surprise early lead against the Sky Blues. It ended in a one-all draw. Tap it coming up. Adam LaFondra joins Jamie McLaren atop the Golden Boot race. It leaves the Reds in sixth place, five points ahead of the Wanderers, who have two games in hand. Jason Day shares the lead in a great start for the Aussies at the PGA Championship. Coming out of his slump at San Francisco's Harding Park, the 2015 champion set the pace with an early bogey free 65. Day is now five under. Pretty sound the whole way round. I you know, had a lot of good quality sh iron shots coming into the greens. All six Aussies are within six of the lead, including Adam Scott at two under in his yes. return to the tour. At one over, Cameron Smith's ruining a three late drop shots. Big bad Bryson DeChambeau snapped the shaft of his driver, but was allowed to continue oh with goodness. a replacement. Ben Simmons' season could be over on the eve of the NBA playoffs after scans revealed the Philadelphia Star partially dislocated his kneecap in their 107-98 win over Washington yesterday. Simmons is now set for an indefinite period on the sidelines with only five games left in the regular season. And Sal, not long to wait. The playoffs are due to start on the 17th of August, so he's got to get moving if that knee is going to come back. Mm, OK, thanks for that, Matt. Don't go anywhere. Our top stories are just ahead. It's the cold case gripping Australia. We have new developments on the mysterious disappearance of a woman from Bathurst. Bones found in Sydney, but detectives have no idea who they belong to. For the first time, hear from the man who made the grisly discovery after stopping for a roadside toilet break. A spaceship in Parramatta. That's what locals are calling it. See the glass monstrosity about to be erected. And pulling over to push, we introduce you to the mum who gave birth on the side of the M4. This is the night that decides who will make the final. We are going to ask you to perform again. They'll fight for their place. Oh! oh! Yes, yes! The judges must choose... So hard! ...who will survive. Has to be a yes. I don't think it's a yes. It's time to make a decision. Brand new America's Got Talent, Tuesday, 7.30 on 7. At Domain, save up to 60% off run-out Sleepmaker Silhouette mattresses, proudly Australian-made, plus more great deals on Domain's Sleepmaker Miracoil range. Queen-size mattresses from just $799. Choose the Sleepmaker React Queen mattress for five-zone support in a choice of fields, only $999 each. Or the Elevate Queen mattress, offering temperature regulation cool coat for year-round comfort. Up to 60% off run-out Sleepmaker Silhouette mattresses and more for a limited time, now at Domain. More is possible when you control the road ahead. The BMW X3S Drive 20i. From $199 per week at 4.99% per annum. Business customers only. Search BMW X3. The world's most exotic fragrances are made by nature. That's why we've created Botanica Fragrances, infused with natural ingredients that are responsibly sourced. Botanica by Airwick. That's a knife. We asked where the man from down under has been hiding. You have a knife, but mine's bigger. That's not the line. That is certainly Paul Hogan. I still got it. Maybe we could find ways to call time out on our kids' busy routines before they get sick. But if they do, children's Panadol can start to reduce fever in just 15 minutes. Together, let's rethink care. We're late. I need coffee. Hungry Jack's $2 medium coffee is all about great taste and getting it exactly when you need it most. Try our new, richer, better tasting $2 medium coffee all day at Hungry Jack's. She loves cats. So tonight, I'll borrow my neighbours. <laughs> my babies. Temptations Cat Treats. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Sally Bowery. Welcome back to our Martin Place headquarters. These are our top stories on 7. 
Thousands of people are set to be given a cash boost from the government. A $15 billion expansion of the JobKeeper program has been announced to keep businesses and workers around the country afloat. A crackdown on Victorians making their way into New South Wales has begun. Anyone crossing our southern border will be sent to quarantine. Australian soldiers will be deployed to help with the recovery in Beirut. And still to come, Donald Trump bans TikTok, the video sharing app outlawed by the president. We'll see what happens next. It's hoped a new podcast by a leading investigative reporter will help solve one of the state's greatest crime mysteries. 31-year-old store manager Janine Vaughan disappeared from Bathurst almost 19 years ago. Ashley Hansen has more. The country town of Bathurst has been haunted by the disappearance of Janine Vaughan for almost two decades. Now the world is about to hear about the cold case. The bubbly and beautiful 31-year-old vanished after a night out in December 2001. She was last seen getting into a mystery red car and never seen again. Her family are fuelled by anguish and anger. I hate that I come to this town and people still don't know who Janine Vaughan is. That just really riles me up. Despite three persons of interest, a coronial inquest and a police integrity commission inquiry, Janine's killer or body has never been found. Please come forward. She loved us and if she is alive and she would be in a lot of pain knowing that we're gone through this, please. More twists and turns in the case have now been uncovered by the Australian newspaper journalist Hedley Thomas. He was behind the hit podcast, The Teacher's Pet. Janine's family hope this new podcast, The Night Driver, will eventually lead them to her remains and the people responsible for taking her precious life. Homicide detectives remain baffled over the grim discovery of human remains in the Royal National Park two years ago. Who the person was and what happened to them remains a mystery. Evan Batten has spoken exclusively with the man who found the bag of bones. Sally, it was just an extraordinary discovery by this man who's told us he was just going for a drive with his girlfriend to the figure eight pools in the Royal National Park when he stopped for a quick toilet break and that sparked a major homicide investigation. He tells us about the moment he looked down at the ground and found what he could tell immediately were human remains. I was quite curious um, and I, I just thought straight away this might be a skeleton, this, somebody might have been uh, killed. At 6pm Sally will tell you more of his remarkable story but police today wanted to release some key information that they've learned over the last couple of years. After many months of extensive DNA analysis they've determined the man was aged between 25 and 40. He's about 175 centimetres tall with black hair, brown eyes and is thought to be of Asian descent. We're lucky that we do have scientific and forensic advancements that we have at the moment. Now Sally, police have also gone right through the missing persons database, narrowing down the potential candidates to a list of 560 odd and now even further down to around 20 or 30 candidates who fit those particular descriptions. But they are today appealing for anyone else who may not yet have uh, reported a loved one or an associate missing to still come forward. Sally? It's been described as a starship and it's coming to Parramatta. The city is undergoing a massive revamp with a colossal mound of glass and steel at its centre. But the new council chamber building is already dividing opinion, as Serena Andaloro explains. Good afternoon to you, Anne. Well, the $130 million number five building will be the final piece in Parramatta Square, which is set to be a new beating heart for the River City. We've been given a first look inside the six-storey building, dubbed the Starship Enterprise in construction circles for its futuristic design. It will house a state-of-the-art library, community and creative spaces and the council chambers. It will offer commercial towers and premium grade office space for our over 20,000 workers, taking our key workforce to at least 75,000 with tenants such as the New South Wales Government and the National Australia Bank. The sod was today turned at the construction site. It's set to be completed in April 2022, finishing off 
Parramatta Square, a $2.7 billion commercial hub accommodating 20,000 additional workers. Number three and four Parramatta Square are now complete with construction at six and eight currently underway. New laws mean tradies will now require a licence to install medical gas in Sydney hospitals. The change was prompted by a gas bungle at, Black T at Bankstown, rather, Lidcombe Hospital, that killed a newborn and left another permanently brain damaged. Both were poisoned with nitrous oxide after a gas port was incorrectly labelled as oxygen. There are big fines and potential jail time for anyone who doesn't follow the new rules. An elderly woman has died after being hit by a van in Western Sydney. The 77-year-old who was using a walker was struck while crossing Station Street in Fairfield Heights. She was given CPR at the crash scene, but paramedics were not able to save her. The 44-year-old van driver was arrested and had his licence suspended on the spot. He's been charged with dangerous driving, occasioning death. Pressure is mounting on New South Wales Treasurer Dominic Perrottet to stand down over the so-called ICARE scandal which claimed the political scalp of his Chief of Staff. State political reporter Alex Hart is following the story. Alex, Labor wants the Premier to take action. Yes, Sally, the opposition leader says the Premier must stand her Treasurer aside and launch an independent investigation into his office. This all stems from the fact that the salaries of two of his staff members were being paid for by the state-owned workplace compensation insurer iCare. iCare has been in the headlines for two weeks over claims of underpaying injured workers, overpaying executives and conflicts of interest. As a result, the CEO and a board member have resigned. The Treasurer is the minister responsible for the agency. After launching an investigation into iCare this week, Last night, he accepted the resignation of his Chief of Staff over the staffing issue. Labor and the Greens say that's not good enough. His office has been compromised, his decision-making has been compromised, and this scandal-ridden agency has clearly, clearly uh, infiltrated his office. Every single dollar came from employers who were paying that money into a scheme to, to ensure that injured workers get paid. Nobody paid into that scheme to give the Treasurer yet another political staffer. The Treasurer has told Seven News that staff are allowed to be paid for in this way and he was aware of the situation, but that his Chief of Staff was responsible for all his employees and failed to put the proper arrangements in place. For now, the Premier won't be standing him aside. Sally. Thank you, Alex. Now for a first look inside one of the country's biggest multi-art centres, which has just reopened. There are some of these. are some of the visual installations that are being unveiled at Carriage Works. The Everly venue has had a tough time lately, closing down during the lockdown and then falling into voluntary administration before it was thrown a lifeline. A dramatic medical emergency played out on the side of the M4 at Prospect yesterday. A Sydney mum was forced to pull over and give birth in the breakdown lane. Her little girl is now doing well after a chaotic labour her mum and dad are unlikely to forget. Amber Laidler spoke to the parents today. Well, this is where Angela Burgess and David Price thought they'd be welcoming their second child into the world, but their baby had other plans. It was around 4.30 yesterday afternoon when the pair started making their way here to Blacktown Hospital with Angela's contractions just starting to become consistent. But baby didn't want to wait. Reservoir Road. Yes. Okay. Exactly what happened. Um, we've just delivered the baby. Just 16 minutes later, in the middle of peak hour traffic, their little girl Lexi was born in the breakdown lane of the M4 motorway at Prospect. Cleaned her face, gave her a little breath of air, she started screaming. Today, David was reunited with Peter Slay, the voice that guided him over the triple zero phone call in the moments after Lexi arrived, and Belinda Callahan, one of the paramedics who came to his aid. But David had done some research in the form of an old SAS survival handbook his grandfather had gifted him years ago. It has a page on emergency childbirth, and he had jokingly read it to Angela just hours earlier. Uh, as soon as I was on the phone to Peter and realised what was going on, I was like, God damn, I'm glad I read that book. <laughs> 
Both Angela and baby Lexi are healthy and well, and all three, David included, are now recovering here at Blacktown Hospital. Just ahead on 7 News, from the CBD to Chatswood, we'll show you where you can save $10,000 a year on rent. Donald Trump bans TikTok. See what will happen to the video sharing app. And it's a dreary 10 degrees at Blacktown. Brownie has a forecast soon. Last year went down to the final kick. He has missed. But can the Bombers and Giants do it again? This time, four, three, two, one, right on the siren. And the excitement machines are unleashed. Charlie Cameron, Bottoms Kelly. Lions versus Bulldogs. X Factor everywhere. Two huge games start tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Go to the footy on 7 mate. When did every day start to feel like one of those days? It's why we developed Panadol Rapid. Absorbed two times faster than regular Panadol tablets, so you can keep pace with the day. The thing is, today's pace takes a toll. It's time to rethink how we look after ourselves. Because every positive change, no matter how small, can make all the difference. Together, let's rethink care. Don't let this deal be news to you. Lock in full digital access to the Daily Telegraph plus seven-day paper home delivery for just $1 a day for the first 12 weeks. Call 1-800-323-999 today. Advanced liquid capsules have a thin seam which enables fast release into the body. To sort pain out fast, use Neurofins Advanced Liquid Capsules. Unleash the speed of liquid. Learn hands on real world skills while you earn money with a fee free apprenticeship or traineeship with Australia's largest education provider. Search Take New South Wales Apprenticeships or call 131 601. Household bills keep going up. You could save money by living in the dark, growing out your hair, wearing seven layers and surviving on a diet of canned tuna. Or just call iSelect and we could help you save money on health, car, home and contents insurance, internet and energy bills. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect on 13 19 20. Pino Clean Simply Wipes are our new way to disinfect. They kill 99.9% .9 of germs with a plant-based disinfectant active and they're made with 100% biodegradable fibres. New Pino Clean Simply. These undies make you chafe. And these, as well as these. Chafing is horrible. These are step ones. The inventors of no chafe underwear. They've got these lycra panels between the legs, which means no more chafing. You buy them at stepone.life and never chafe again. As you're waking... New details coming in by the hour. Know what's breaking. We have all the angles covered. The team Australia Trusts are on Sunrise. This afternoon, we can reveal which Sydney suburbs have seen the biggest rent reductions. High vacancy rates and plunging prices means renters are cashing in, some saving upwards of $10,000 a year. The reason for it, less tourists and migrants, closed borders and growing unemployment. Rent prices in the city have fallen by more than 20%. The average now around $7.50 a week for an apartment. They're down 11.5% in Redfern at Chatswood. They've plunged to $591 and for Bronte slashed by more than 11%. You're watching Seven's Afternoon News live across Sydney. Still to come, a nurse infected with COVID-19 delivers a stark warning. This virus is worse than you can imagine. He's furious at people not taking safety precautions seriously. We'll show you his video, which is making headlines this afternoon, in just a few minutes. 
Time to check in with finance now. Steve Dagalin is at Comsec for us this afternoon. Good morning, or good afternoon to you, rather. It's been a long day, Stephen. And it was another underwhelming performance from the Aussie share market. Uh, good afternoon, Sally. Exactly right. I forget my day sometimes too. But look, the Aussie market down about half a percent today. So it's the third time in five days that the market has actually fallen back. And certainly what did not help uh, today was the fact that there are a rate tensions rising between the US and China and also uh, the Reserve Bank flagging a slower recovery for the Aussie economy in 2021. The good news, though, is that thanks to some really big gains on Tuesday, which was the best day in a fortnight, shares have actually still managed to improve over the course of the week by about 1%. But it was messy today. Mining stocks certainly held things back most, with Rio Tinto down quite heavily. IAG, the owner of NRMA, dropped back on some disappointing profit results. And some of those travel stocks like Flight Centre did OK. The Aussie dollar, 72.1 US Ellie. All right, thanks for that. Stephen Dagley in at Comsec for us this afternoon. Well, in a move that is likely to inflame tensions even more, Donald Trump has pulled rank banning the Chinese-owned social media app TikTok. The US president used national emergency powers to declare the video sharing platform a security threat. The executive order was signed today and comes into effect in 45 days unless it's sold. America claims TikTok collects user data which could be accessed by the Chinese Communist Party. Microsoft is in talks to buy TikTok, which has a billion global subscribers, including Australians, who have been warned the app connects right back to China. Chinese app WeChat is also on the president's hit list. Meanwhile, the future of the powerful American gun lobby is in the crosshairs itself after a legal push to disband the polarising National Rifle Association. It's reignited the divisive gun debate in the middle of an election campaign. Here's US correspondent David Woywood. Good afternoon. Well, it was all about guns and God today in a heated day of campaigning in the United States. Wearing a mask and touring the knife-edge state of Ohio, President Trump was involved in a near miss. The Ohio governor testing positive to COVID-19 just hours before the pair were due to meet. Our great governor, Governor of Ohio, DeWine, just tested positive just here. And we want to wish him the best. The same couldn't be said for his political rival, Joe Biden. The president intensified attacks on his opponent, describing Joe Biden as a reckless, godless radical. No religion, no anything. Hurt the Bible, hurt God. He's against God, he's against guns. The comments were sparked after the New York Attorney General moved to dissolve the powerful National Rifle Association amid allegations of corruption. Claims the gun lobby had misused $63 million in charitable and member dues to fund the lavish lifestyle of its executives. My office filed a lawsuit against the National Rifle Association to dissolve the organization in its entirety for years of self-dealing and illegal conduct. The NRA fired back, describing the legal push as a baseless, premeditated attack. It's now launched its own action. Familiar battle lines drawn and still 88 days to go until Election Day. Sydney 6pm News is coming up with Michael Usher. Hello to you, Michael. What are you working on in the newsroom? Hello there, Sally. Here's what we have for you tonight. Concerns over one family's coronavirus cluster. Several venues impacted. A school forced to close for deep cleaning. That is Queensland. Counts down to another closure. We're live to the border. And the rush to make sure you can get across the state line. Australia's hit an ominous COVID milestone. 20,000 infections have now been confirmed. Tonight, we'll break down those numbers and look at how our state is placed should the cases spike. The shocking aftermath in Beirut. Have a look at that. From funerals to violent protests, the battle for survival before rebuilding can begin. And why the people there are begging the French president, who toured for help. A night of robberies across Sydney, including this one caught on camera. A customer held at knife point will speak to the shop owner. The thieves involved in that are still on the run. And it's the move that's raised ethical questions infecting people with coronavirus on purpose in the hopes of finding a vaccine. Very quickly, we'll look at that controversial trial tonight. Sally, a lot going on. We'll have it all for you in Sydney 7 News at 6 o'clock. All right, thanks for that, Michael. See you then. It is 4.48. Let's get a check on Sydney's traffic.
Good afternoon, Marina Ivanovic here in the Queen Street. Wedding car hire traffic chopper. We are stuck inside the airport this afternoon due to the wet weather around Sydney. But I can tell you, heading through Ashfield for Parramatta Road, we've got a three-vehicle accident causing delays in both directions and very heavy traffic starting to build for the M5 through Moorbank, approaching Moorbank Avenue. Do you want a wedding car as good as the dress? Visit Queen Street Wedding and Car Hire, Rolls-Royce, Bentley, Maybach, Maserati and more. Go to Queen Street Car Hire on Facebook and Instagram. This virus is worse than you can imagine. That's the message from a Melbourne nurse who has filmed his own struggle with COVID-19. He's furious with young people not taking the pandemic seriously and is making headlines across the country this afternoon. Nick McCallum reports. It's a powerful message from a young, fit 24-year-old determined to dispel the myth that coronavirus is devastating only for older people. My name's Dan and I'm a registered nurse. Dan Collins is scared, very scared. I've got a cough, intermittent fever, sore throat, I've lost my smell, I've lost my taste. And then there's also the worry of chronic health condition. This is the living room sort of area. He's now in quarantine in a Melbourne hotel. He had been working at Flemington and North Melbourne Towers and cared for infected aged care residents brought to Royal Melbourne Hospital. One he watched die. Just held his hand and told him that everything was going to be OK. Um, yeah, it wasn't too much more I could say told him that people loved him because he had so many phone calls just calling to say their goodbye. As a 24 year old, how do you cope with that? It stuck with me for a while. Well, it's still, it's still with me actually. He's furious at those, particularly the young, not taking the virus seriously. And to those people who think it's an old person's disease. Yeah, they're wrong because it does. And it's, it's awful. You don't want it. His message ends with this impassioned plea. Trust me, I've got COVID, I'm young, but it sucks. It's even more potent when you consider there are 1,537 healthcare workers just like Dan who have tested positive for COVID-19. Next in 7's Afternoon News, David Brown is here with the latest forecast. Tonight is a huge night. It is the farmer wants a wife, a country ball. And love is in the air. I came here to find a partner. Fall in love and live happily ever after. But one farmer is about to have his heart broken. That's true then? Yep. She just betrayed me. I definitely liked her. I thought she was a great girl, but I was pretty hurt to hear that. I was in shock. A bit emotional. <laughs> hey. Probably best to not come back to the farm. New Farmer Wants a Wife, Sunday at 7 on 7. When life gives you, how did that get under there in us? Godfrey's gives you cleanliness. Award-winning Wertime Stick Vacuum, $7.99. Hoover Steam Mop, $2.79. Godfrey's Cleanliness. With Belong, you get unlimited NBN broadband for $65 a month for 12 months. That's unlimited streaming of the latest hits, or misses, plus no upfront fees for standard activation. We all use our broadband differently. Together, we're different. Belong. Macca's fries are made with 100% Aussie potatoes grown on farms like Kev's. We've been supplying Macca's for many years. And for a limited time, cheeseburger shaker fries are back. Macca's fries, get them fresh or replaced on us. Muscle and osteo pain can really tie you down. That pain is caused by inflammation. Nurofen helps reduce inflammation and relieve osteo and muscle pain for up to eight hours. Break free with Nurofen. These are step one underwear. They have these lacquer panels between the legs, which means no more craving. Uh, I mean chafing. Go to stepone.live and buy the best underwear in the world. No, really. Better than baguette, better than cheese. My bladder telling me what to wear. Thanks to Tenor, I say no way. Tenor discreet pads are 45% thinner. 
fast absorbing and five times drier, making them remarkably secure, yet so surprisingly discreet. You can get away with wearing whatever you want. With Tenor, I will be me. A lot of people have sensitive teeth, but gum health is really important as well. If you've got sensitive teeth, you should be looking for something to help with the sensitivity, but you should also be thinking about, do I need to look after my gums? Using the new Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum Toothpaste not only deals with sensitivity, it also maintains gum health when used twice a day, every day. I think it's fantastic to have a dual action toothpaste. Two benefits with the one toothpaste, what a great idea. It's almost time for liftoff. This team score is out of this world. Houston to the nerd probe. Better strap on those super rocket super nerds. Full thrust nerd probe. Tennis to great. Correct. Because you're in for a bumpy ride. What is the common term for a Russian astronaut? New the chase. Weekdays on 7. A stubborn homeowner who tried to hold out for a better demolition deal from the government has come off second best. Her tiny house now sits wedged between four lanes of traffic in South China. For a decade, she rejected offers, but says she's happy to deal with the consequences. Room with a view there. Why would you? <laughs> Why would you? I oh, know, it's not ideal. No, uh, it's not. Brownie, speaking of not ideal, we've yeah. got some pretty intense <laughs> weather coming up this weekend. Oh, uh, well, it's a bit of a mixed bag, uh, Sally. In fact, I've got some, uh, a bit of a positive spin. I don't think there'll be as much rain as what we're anticipating earlier this week. But look, more rain tonight, uh, improving tomorrow. Yes, just some clearing showers. In fact, uh, the thing that stands out today, it was cold, we all know that, but it's the city's coldest August day in seven years. The top 13.6 degrees degrees by early afternoon. The record, by the way, 9.1. And that was set way back in 1872. Around the state, wet as you can see at the moment, 10 degrees in mudgy orange. It's even got it's only 6 degrees. Headed to the ACT in Canberra, uh, 7 degrees and the rain continues. And the active low pressure zone that's behind the wet weather, you can see it just slowly drifting towards the coast. Most of the uh, rain should eventually clear out to sea tomorrow. But we're keeping an eye on the tail end of this feeder band that will bring extensive rain to the southern coast and of course some flash flooding with falls. 100 millimetres plus. Interstate, a few showers are on the way for Melbourne and it's cold also, 15 degrees for uh, Brisbane, improving some morning showers and a fine day. Warm, I guess, 26 degrees for our city. Yes, a shower or two first thing tomorrow morning, then a fine day to follow, up around 19 degrees. As we go to the seven-day outlook, Sunday morning should be fine. Showers developing in the afternoon, wet and windy for Monday. That's latest from the Weather Centre. More at six, Sally. OK, thanks for that, Brownie. And that is Sydney's 4pm news for this Friday. Michael Usher will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Sally Barry. Stay with 7 now for The Chase Australia. Hope you have a great night.